Hey and welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to be looking to how we can get our details for our person and pass this onto this next screen and call our API. So we're going to be using a lot of concepts that we covered in our previous video where we created a view model for our people view and then apply this to our detail view. So if you watch my previous video about Postman, you would have saw that in order for us to actually get a single user, we need to use the endpoint where you actually pass in a single user ID. Now what we want to do is when our user is tapped like so, we essentially want to basically pass through the data, which is their user ID, and then call the API to get this information that you see on the screen here. Because right now, all of them are just tied directly to this one, brother. Now, what we're going to do is actually update our detail view to accept an integer, which is the user ID. So let's do this now. So let's go into our detail view. So we just do Command Shift O, and then we just say detail view. And then now within this detail view, I'm just gonna make it a bit smaller. Instead, pause. now within our detail view, we wanna actually add in a new property here called user ID. Now this is just gonna be a constant because we don't need to actually observe any changes. We just wanna pass it some data, like so, cool. And now that we've done this, we actually should get an error within the preview saying that it's missing the user ID. So we're going to actually access the user ID by using our local JSON. So I'm just gonna do a bit of typing and then we'll break it down. So now what we just have here in our previews is a preview user ID that we're going to use to present on the screen. And we're just accessing the first person in our user's data array. So within here, let's just create our user ID. And I'm just going to pass in this computer property that we just created, like so. Cool. All right, sweet. So now if you just go back to your SwiftUI preview, you should notice that this doesn't build. And the reason why this doesn't build is because in our people view, it actually now expects us to pass in a user ID. So let's go into our people view. And then this time we're going to pass in the user's ID from this property here. Just adding the missing parameter. And then all we need to say here is user.id like so. And now if we build the whole project, you'll see it's fine. And if we was to go back to our detail view, you'll now see that this builds fine as well. So this is looking good. Okay, cool. So we've got all of that set up. The next thing we need to do is actually create a view model for this detail view here. So let's go into our folder detail. And then within view models, we're going to create a new view model called details, called details view model. Cool. And then we're just going to type out the skeleton for what this view model is going to need. So let's just do that now. So now we've got our view model here and we've got our observable object marked on it. So we can actually listen to the updates within this file for our view. And this is what is going to basically fetch the details for our user. So now that we actually have our skeleton, let's actually create a source of truth within this file that we will use to actually listen to updates from within our view. I'm also going to mark it as private set so that it can only be modified within the scope of this class and not outside of it. So let's do that now. So now we have our property that we're going to use to actually listen to updates from within our view. So we need to actually add in our networking manager within this function and actually allow us to execute the request to get a user based on their ID. So let's actually just do this now. So what we're going to do is just go into our people view model and then we're going to be a bit lazy because we're just going to simply copy this here and then paste it into our detail here. And then now we need to actually start to update this function. So the first we need to do is actually pass in the user's ID. So after this, you'll notice if we go into Postman that to get a single user, you need to actually pass in their ID after the user's path. So for now, what we're going to do is just add in a placeholder for the ID and we'll come back to this in a second. The next thing we need to do is actually change the type. So rather than this being user's response, we actually want this to be user detail response. So let's update this. And then finally now, we actually don't have any concept of users within this file. So instead, this is just going to be user info. And our type is now different because there's no property called data on the user's response. So instead, we're just going to assign response directly to user info like so. Cool. 
and now this all builds but like I said before in order to actually get a user you need to actually be able to pass in an ID so we're going to need to update our function signature here fetch detail to actually accept a integer to get a user based on their ID so let's add a parameter here called for ID and then int so now we can pass in this ID here within the string here so let's just remove these curly braces and instead we'll do some string interpolation and then we'll just pass in the ID like so cool so now we actually have everything set up for our detail view model so now within our detail view we actually want to create a state object for it to listen to the changes and to also execute the code to actually fetch a user's details so let's go into our detail view and then above our state property let's create a state object that's private Cool. And now we have our view model within this file. What we can do is actually remove our state property that we had previously before that was being used to listen to the updates for the detail view because now this is within our view model. So now we're going to remove this out. And when you do that, you should notice that your view is going to complain that it's missing some things. So let's actually just work through these errors. So the first error that we have here is that we're actually calling our on appear to actually get our user info from our local JSON file. So instead of doing this, instead, let's call our function to fetch the user's detail. So let's remove this. Now I'm just going to say vm.fetchDetails4. And then the ID we want to pass in here is the user ID property. So this constant that we have created up above here. Cool. And we keep on scrolling down you'll see that we have some instances where we have user info. So like I said before, because this is now within our view model, we simply just need to add VM before this, like so. And then we'll also do this for our link as well. And we'll do it here. And then we'll just scroll down and we'll do it again here, like so. And we'll also do it here. And then finally, we'll do it on these last two things here. So now everything in our view is listening to our view model for updates. So nothing is bound and tied directly to this view. So what we want to do now is actually test this out to see if this works. So we just run this. And if we go back into our people view. And I'm just going to close all the other tabs because it's getting a bit unmanageable. So let's just run this. And then now you'll see that we have a list of our people. But if I actually click on someone like Emma, you'll now see that we're getting details for Emma because we're passing in Emma's user ID to our detail view, like so. If we go back, you'll see that we can get Janet and we can also get Eve as well here. So now we're not reading anymore from our local JS anymore. We've just slotted in a view model that helps us access and get this data from an actual API. So far, what we've done is we've only been making get requests to actually fetch data. One thing that you're actually able to do is actually create a user as well. So to actually do this, you actually don't want to use a get request. You want to use a post request. So in our next video, we'll be looking at how we can actually send data to an API using a post request. And we'll be modifying our networking manager to accept these type of requests also. So it can actually handle get and post requests. So make sure you stick around. So that's everything in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also as well, if you haven't already, I really appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel and hit notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.